it's Wendy. Welcome. I'm so excited you're here today. We are going to be playing with the new cookie cutter Halloween and Teeny Tiny Wishes, which isn't new, but it's a fun set. Um, the cookie cutter Halloween set is in the new holiday catalog. And while we're on the subject of holiday catalogs, let me share some information with you. I found out this week that the mailing selector I used to mail all my holiday catalogs should have those catalogs arriving to you this week. If you do not receive your holiday catalog this week and you're a regular customer of mine, please let me know. So if Friday comes and you've not received a holiday catalog from me, I absolutely need to know that if you're a regular customer. Now, if you're not a regular customer and you still want a catalog, you are more than welcome to have one for free. You just need to email me and let me know that. Okay, so I've stamped three of these really cute little cookie cutter monsters and I used Tuxedo Memento Black ink because I'm gonna do some Copic coloring. And I absolutely love how these monsters turned out. They are so cute. And um, we're just gonna go right in and color. So I'm speeding this up just because I know you probably don't want to sit and watch me color forever. Um, this is E0000. It's a super, super light skin tone color. Um, and I wanted that because this is a little vampire. So he should not have dark skin, right? I mean, he should be like looking like he's pretty much dead. And um, I'm coloring his shirt in gray and then I'm coloring his vest in red and I'm going to use um, R17, R27 and R29 I think, or R24 and R29, sorry about that. I'm still really learning my Copic colors as far as the numbers are concerned um, and so I don't really, I'm not very good about showing them here and, and letting you know what they are because frankly, I don't figure you really care that much. But if you guys want me to make sure I share my numbers um, that I'm using, comment below and let me know. Okay, so basically you just go in with the lightest red. I covered the whole surface. Then I'm going in with my medium tone and then my darker tone just to add a little bit of shading on his vest. There's not a lot of shading happening here because this card doesn't really call for a light source because everything's gonna get punched out and put kind of in the middle of a card. So um, anyway, that's that. All right, we're gonna move on to the skeleton and the mummy and both of them use the C1s. So I'm using C1, C3, C5, just to add a little bit of shading because that actually really helps your white pop and make it look more white, which Trust me, I understand how crazy that sounds, but it's actually true. Um, the, when you add some of the gray element, it really makes it stand out and look like a white skeleton. I don't get it. I don't get how it works. I just know it works. Um, so I'm adding quite a bit of gray shading to this mummy because I really want the middle of him to stand out. And I'm just using a process that's called feathering or flicking, depending on who you learn from. And um, you're just literally, sorry about my dog barking. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, you're literally just flicking the pen using a really light touch and flicking the pen inwards. Um, and then going ahead and adding here some C3, I think this is what it is, C3. And then I'm going to be adding some C5. And then I'm blending it back out with some C1. And it'll just end up having this really soft edge. And then I'm going to go over the entire thing and use my colorless blender. And that will kind of even soften those edges even more. The edges, when I'm saying the edges, I'm referring to the edges inside of this little mummy. So you can see this really highlights the white and makes that white really stand out and gives dimension to this little mummy. It kind of makes him feel 3D. And so it's one of my favorite techniques to do actually. It's something that I really resisted doing when I first started using Copics because in my head I'm like it's not he's not going to look white or the item's not going to look white if I use a bunch of um gray but it turns out it does and then it also makes them really dimensional so I went outside the lines here just in a couple places so I just went and used my colorless blender to push that color back in and it worked great so here's what's fun about this there's another bundle in the holiday catalog that comes with like a gingerbread man and some other cute little guys 
and it uses this punch and it's a bundle. However, when you purchase that bundle, then you can purchase this stamp set and you already have the punch. So this is like on my number one list of things to purchase out of the holiday catalog for you would be purchasing the cookie cutter bundle so that you get the Christmassy little cookie cutter guys and the um, punch and then purchasing the Halloween. So, okay, this is something I wanted to show you. I am cutting this paper. I cut an inch and a half off this edge. So now this paper is seven by 11. And then I'm cutting it again at the six inch mark. And then I'm gonna turn the paper and score it three and a half. So now I have a six inch by three and a half size card. And the other piece of card stock that I have left over, I'm gonna score it three and a half. And it's now a five inch by three and a half inch card. So um, that gives you two card bases that are different sizes. And I could have just scored it all the way down at the three and a half mark and then cut it. But that gives you two separate card pieces that are fun different sizes, but you get two cards out of one sheet of paper. So I wanted to show you that. Okay, so tomorrow I'm gonna show you how I use that little leftover piece. So make sure you come by because I have a blog hop happening. It won't be, I won't have a video, it's just gonna be on my blog. Okay, so then there's a super adorable designer series paper in the holiday catalog that is for Halloween. And the name of it is escaping me right now, but I'll have it, all of my supplies are always listed on my blog. And there's always a link to my blog in the description of my videos. So you click there and then you can go and see where all I get all my supplies or where I use them, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so um this paper is really fun it looks like a spider web and then i have this paper and this is all from the same paper pack this is really really cute um this is designer series paper with little bats all over it and it layers right on top so my friend katina martinez um who happens to live a couple blocks from me is a stampin up demonstrator she's actually on my team and she does paper shares I don't know if you've ever heard of a paper share, but basically you end up getting like six by six sheets of every paper that's in the catalog. I don't do those because she does them. So I'm going to link to her website here on my video. I'm also going to link um, in my blog to her so that if you want to get a paper share, go ahead and purchase a paper share from her. Even if you're my customer, don't feel weird about that. It's fine. Um, I don't do paper shares, and so if you need a paper share and you want to get on her list for paper shares, then you can um, go ahead and go to her blog and get on that list to get a paper share from her. Okay, so there's this really pretty new twine available in the holiday catalog, and it's gray and black, and I used it to just tie a little bow right here going all the way around this card because I thought it needed a little something for my eyeball to go towards. And then I'm gonna add all my little monsters to the front of this card. And, oh, actually I lied. I'm gonna stamp first. I'm gonna use pumpkin pie ink to stamp my little ha happy Halloween sentiment. Um, the thing about these cookie cutter stamps is that they don't have sentiments. So you gotta make sure you have a sentiment separately if you're wanting to stamp one. So I went ahead and stamped happy Halloween in pumpkin pie, and then I'm gonna add my little monsters. And I have to tell you really quick, I am going to be giving these cards to my cousin. One of them is going to go to my cousin who's now living in Long Beach because she started um, Long Beach um, University. And then another friend of mine who, she's actually a friend, she's actually a sister of a friend. So um, she is going to Yale and I'm so excited to know somebody going to Yale. And this is why, because of Gilmore Girls. I'm a huge Gilmore Girls fan. I love Gilmore Girls. And Rory went to Yale. And so now I feel like I'm smarter by proxy because I know somebody that's going to Yale. And so um, I'm going to send her a happy Halloween goodie box as well as my cousin that's living in Long Beach. So you see the fly on my hand. Okay, that's horrifying. But I have to, t <laughs> have to tell you what's going on here. So I live in the country, you know that. I've told you several times. I'm sure if you're new to my channel, now you know. And we have flies, it's gross. 
and we get flies really bad this time of year, really bad, because we have a little fair that's local here in town, and when the fair leaves, there's horse poop and cow poop and chicken poop and bird poop and every kind of poop you can imagine, and we end up with a bunch of flies, and it's so super gross. So that's why you saw a fly on my hand, and I was horrified, but I'm like, that's my life. I cannot reshoot a whole video because of one stupid fly. So, <laughs> so that's what happened. So I'm making now some really cute envelopes for these cards because their cards are a funky shape. So I had to make my own envelopes, which was great because I love this paper. So I'm using an eight by eight piece of paper here. And then I am scoring it at originally at the three and an eighth inch and then just going along the score lines. This is our envelope punch board. I highly recommend that you own one of these. If you don't have an envelope punch board, you totally need one because if you make an envelope that's a weird size, then you have an envelope maker and the, it makes pretty much every size you can possibly imagine. And the instructions for each size envelope are right on the envelope punch board. So, I mean, it's just fantastic. You don't have to do any other extra work. You just look right on the board itself and then you make your envelope. And I think they're like 20 bucks. They're not really expensive. I sell them in my online store. So if you need one, make sure you pick one up um, when you place your next order with me. Okay, so I'm using Fast Fuse Adhesive on this because um, envelopes tend to want to pull away from each other. Like it, it tends to want to come apart. So I'm using my bone folder to... Um, just make those score lines extra secure and then I'm using my fast fuse adhesive to really make sure that this envelope sticks together well. I don't want it coming apart before it gets to its recipient. And then I'll just tie a ribbon around it to keep it closed. Okay, so that is my envelope and my card and I just love how they turned out. They're so much fun. And I really hope that you are excited as I am about the holiday catalog. Every single blog post and video I do from now until the holiday catalog launches is going to feature holiday product because I want you to see all the really cool items that are going to be available to you to purchase. And you can see more pictures, have more information over on my blog. Once again, hang tight if you haven't gotten a catalog from me yet. It's just because the selector takes a little while. Hopefully your husband didn't pick up the mail and see that there was a Stampin' Up! catalog in there and throw it in the trash. But if he did, you can certainly get another one from me. So after this week, like I said, if you haven't gotten your catalog, make sure you hit me up. Okay, please click subscribe if you're new to my channel and you're not subscribed and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And I will see you on Wednesday on YouTube. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.